As the main character for Street Fighter 3, Alex was a symbol of change. He was a new fresh take on what a Street Fighter was and he had earned our respect. That said, we hadn't seen this guy for quite some time and the cult fanbase that had grown around him remained hopeful but were becoming restless. Finally, after what seemed to be a response to those fans, Capcom brought Alex back to the series for Street Fighter 5. Let's see if Alex's return was worth the wait. Upon his announcement, a huge majority of people seemed to be unsure how to take him on a visual level. On the one hand, it still very clearly looked like Alex. He wasn't given a radical makeover and the character was still identifiable, so kudos for that. The trouble that some fans were having with Alex's looks seemed to boil down to what I believe are two design aspects contradicting each other. Let me explain. Alex's new hairstyle was a bit hit and miss, mainly because his long flowing golden hair from his Street Fighter 3 design had become pretty iconic to him. Changing that was going to be a gamble, but to Capcom's credit, I know the reason they did this was to make Alex appear younger, as this is the character's first appearance from a chronological standing point. I respect the reason for the change and I actually welcome it, so the redesign ain't the problem. Where the issue lies is taking that hairstyle and putting it on a body type that appears considerably larger than what Alex had been presented as before. Alex's proportions look too hench for the character at this stage of his life. This was meant to be a younger Alex than the one we already knew, hence the hair being at that in between growing it out but not quite there yet phase. However, his body mass looks way bigger than how he appears later on in the timeline. I think the fans being uncertain how to take him is due to the mixture of different signals we're being presented. It's supposed to be a younger Alex, and yet there's factors here that make him feel older instead. It's pushing and pulling on the presentation, thus making us feel that something is not quite right. In my own personal opinion, the only time Alex seems to be visually on point in this game is when Bengus' art of him pops up. During Alex's solo story, the character seems to be in the right proportions and his hair also makes more logical sense in its length and style. In fact, his hair during the cutscene artwork looks perfect and I really really like how it appears in those scenes. The concept art for Alex that was shown prior to the character's release was drawn in this same art style and it instantly won me over, but when the official reveal trailer arrived, showing Alex's 3D model, it seemed like a bunch of the design was lost in translation. Picture for a second if you will, this game running on something like the Street Fighter 3 engine instead. Pixel graphics, high definition, smooth as you like, yeah? Okay, now place Alex's Street Fighter 5 design into that kind of graphics engine and I can almost guarantee you that there wouldn't have been as a heavy disconnect from concept to final. As it is, a character like Alex lost a lot of the charm from his concept on the way to his final render. I'm not sure if it was just inexperience with the graphics engine they were using, or if the 3D artist had McDonald's for lunch that day, but either way, it just feels like Alex is not entirely visually where he should be. Even the final official character art of Alex seemed to have been catered more to mimic the 3D character model in the end, which left the concept work brushed further to the side. If we're talking about my preferences, then I'm going to say from a concept basis, Alex looks great. I like the fact his hair is growing out as it shows the character is in the process of becoming the guy we recognize. He's growing and evolving at this point. He hasn't drastically changed his style purposefully, he's just in the middle of developing it. It makes sense. What I love the most about him though is the red shirt tied around his waist now, because I'm a sucker for this style. To see Alex wear a shirt like this not only ticked one of the biggest boxes on my preferences, but it further allowed Alex to be portrayed as a bit younger. It adds that slight element of youth to him. Couple that with the growing hair and you've got a really good representation of how a young Alex should look. I really love the idea behind him, and yet it falls apart a bit when it comes to everything else outside of Bengus' depiction of him. I feel they weren't able to capture the concept like how they should have done when it came time to modelling him, and that's a damn shame because the work Bengus did gives us a familiar Alex in a refreshingly cool new light. Can we, can we just go back to pixels now, Capcom, please? Like, if we're lucky enough to ever get a Street Fighter 6, just go back to the pixel graphics and do yourself a favour, please. Alex in Street Fighter 3 was an established brawler. Trained by a man named Tom, Alex would go on to experience the life of a world warrior and eventually end up crossing paths with the leader of the bloody Illuminati of all things. As far as storylines go, his journey in the Street Fighter 3 series was a pretty heavy one. Now here he is in Street Fighter 5 as a younger scrapper from New York. Please bear in mind that at this point in time he has absolutely zero experience with anything outside of the city he lives in. 
This means no brushes with the Illuminati just yet. He doesn't even really know what Shadaloo is. He's just some scrub from the streets of Manhattan with no future carved out for him. That had always been Alex's background. Capcom chose not to change this, which is bizarre because while some of the other characters had their continuity shredded to shit, Alex got a free pass. During the course of Street Fighter V, Alex's solo story sees him getting abducted by Shadaloo for some brief experiments, but then they set him free anyway because he was wrecking the place. Afterwards, he receives one of the chess pieces that the other characters are looking for in their bid to stop Shadaloo's plans. Dalsim arrives in New York to ask Alex for the chess piece, only for Alex to mistaken Dalsim for a mugger, and then they get into a fight because of it. Really, Alex, Alex, you think this dude in the turban is running up on you? Even after he approached you peacefully, you're calling this a stick up? Rah. That is, um, that Capcom, that was a stretch, man. Holy shit. Anyways, they have a misunderstanding before Alex realizes Dolsim isn't a criminal because, duh. As he leaves, Dolsim bestows some wisdom and a glimpse of the future to Alex, to which he likely shrugged off and went back to sleeping like a waste man. And that was it. That was Alex's entire role in Street Fighter V. Oh, and he also won a fighting tournament at one point, but we didn't really get to see much of that part, so whatever really. Now, do we praise Capcom for sticking to their guns and not wrecking his continuity, which meant limiting Alex's role within this story? Or do we criticize them for not doing more with the character, but recognize that they might have butchered his continuity if they had done so? Personally, if you're asking me, I'm the guy with a megaphone yelling, DON'T TOUCH THE FUCKING CONTINUITY! I'm fine with Alex's role in Street Fighter V's story. It's a cameo more than anything, this isn't even a supporting cast role. This is the absolute bare minimum you could get from a character like Alex if you ain't touching his backstory further, and to me, that's fine. Nothing gets broken here, so I'm not even complaining. I'll take what I can get with Alex, considering he's such a delicate property, and I'll even throw kudos at Capcom for not bloody risking it. But I'll throw that question to you lot now, yeah? Considering the limitations placed upon Alex's appearance in Street Fighter V, how would you have written him into the story for this game? I'm curious to see what his fans had in mind for him, so let me know. Part of me feels that Alex was included in Street Fighter V purely to meet the fan demand and nothing more, which is made even more apparent when Capcom made him a DLC character knowing people would be lining up to buy him. I'm glad to see Alex make a return though, and I'm even more glad to see that aside for some wonky executions in the visual design department, he still feels like the same character. Plus, when put through his paces by an expert player, Alex comes to life in the most beastly way. As I've said in the past, grapple characters have never really been my thing, but when I see someone like Dino here just put the character to work, I can't help but watch on in awe. Overall, Alex has made a return to the series. His inclusion might be uneventful and lacking any sort of urgency, but to be honest, this is one of those occasions where I'm perfectly happy about the character being taken in this direction. <laughs>